my beginning in tobacco control, working as a policy analyst. I was a Māori policy analyst, so I was looking at Māori public health generally, overall. And then I went into smoking to reduce smoking-related harm because that was the biggest killer, not just of Māori but all New Zealanders. So that's been 30 years. Got to the point where a packet of cigarettes, about you, now it's US $28 for a pack of 20. And initially it pushed people from the manufactured cigarettes to roll your own, so loose pouch tobacco, to roll your own cigarettes. So we have a very high rate of people who use, who do roll your own. And that was because they could get more out of, they could make it go further. So then the government equalised the tax to remove the tax advantage. And the price of that now is about 78 New Zealand, uh, which is huge in US dollars. So they had to buy, go back to the pack. And then they rip them apart and sit there, you know, getting the tobacco out so they can roll their own. I feel it's a real attack on their dignity. You know, there's no dignity. You know, forcing people to do undignified things. Even recently, uh, my partner and I were just arriving at the supermarket and a Māori woman came up to him. He was vaping. She said, have you got a cigarette? got a cigarette please and basically begging for a cigarette she said I'll do 20 push-ups you know even if you could give me some money for a cigarette and it's like hey th this has gone too far people have a right to respect and dignity and they are breaching it and the ones that are being undignified is public health I focus on young Māori pregnant mums and who maybe already have one or two kids and they have low incomes, maybe they're on a benefit. We had very high smoking rates among pregnant women. It was easy for the medical profession and the doctors involved in public health to go. Helping pregnant women stop smoking has got to be a priority and a government did make it a priority. Uh, there's a lot of people, you know, they don't want to say that a pregnant woman should vape but actually it also does help them not smoke. We definitely don't want them smoking while they're pregnant. Uh, and if they vape, well at least they're not smoking. We're at about 38% smoking prevalence, daily smoking prevalence 10 years ago. So the, over the last decade, we've dropped to 17%. I've never seen anything work like this. It's been so slow over the 30 years that I've been you know, designing all these programs and lobbying for more funding to help Māori stop smoking. You know, 0.05% reduction or 0.1% or, and then sometimes just a plateau where we made no progress at all. There was a whole decade where we basically made no progress at all. Māori men who quit smoking using vaping and then they started e-liquid manufacturing companies and they opened vape retail stores. Uh, we had a couple of Māori women had their own kind of online radio program about vaping. The good thing that the government has done is they have not put tax on vaping products. We have risk proportionate taxation, no tax on the vaping products and they've just reduced the tax on the heated tobacco product. Once they regulated and legalised vaping and they said, if you can't stop smoking any other way, please switch, switch to vaping. They did a mass media campaign, uh, they have a vaping facts website, trying to address all of these myths and the misinformation. So the government is actually encouraging people to switch to vaping. All of the government funded smoking cessation services have been told, even though some of them didn't want to, they've been told, if people can't quit any other way, you are to help them, you're to tell them about vaping and encourage them to switch. Our smoking prevalence nationally, averaged across the whole population, is down to 6.8%. It's dropped by half in, in just these few years since the government regulated and told everybody, switch to vaping. 
democracy needs to have as a focus those that are most marginalised and you know, lower income, low access to healthcare uh, and low education. Focus on them. Will a policy work for them? What will work for them? If it works for them, it will work for everyone else.